strings are all over the place in MySQL, right? We've got chars, we've got varchars, we've got text types. And if you're here on this video, you probably have databases with a bunch of tables that have a bunch of strings in them already. So I'm not here to tell you about what all these types are, but what I do want to talk to you about is a couple of cool functions that you can use with strings to accomplish useful things in MySQL. So if you want to see me go over four, whoops, four functions in MySQL and what you can use them for, stick around in this video. So the first one I want to talk to you about is the concat function. Now, if you've ever written code like in your whole life, you've probably concatenated strings. So this is nothing groundbreaking here, but it's something that if you haven't used it in MySQL before, you might find this kind of interesting and maybe you can find some ways to apply this to your workload. So what I'm going to do over here is use my strings uh, database here. And I have a couple of tables I'm going to show you here. And for this example, what I want to use is user. So let me select from user and I'm just going to limit it to like five rows so we can see. And we've got a bunch of stuff here. In fact, it doesn't fit very nicely on the screen. But what you can see here is that for every user, I have a number of columns, right? An ID, username, first name, and so on and so forth. So let me just grab a couple of these columns here instead of grabbing all of those. I'm going to say select first name, middle, uh, initial, last name, and then maybe email from users. There we go. Now we can see it a little bit more clearly. So we've got all of these users. And one thing you might want to do if you're in an application with users is show their names rather than as separate entities, but show the first name with the middle initial and then the last name and maybe put a period after the middle initial or maybe put the last name first instead of the first name, all kinds of ways you could mix it up, right? So what you could do is rather than having to do this after the fact in whatever programming language you're working with, you could just concatenate concatenate those together uh, right here in MySQL. So I could say concat and then I could put first name in there. Maybe I could put a space after first name, middle initial, and then after middle initial, I could have put a period and then a space and then my last name. And let's see, what did I do wrong here? I'm probably missing. Oh yeah, I need to close off my uh, parenthesis there, of course run that. And then what we've got is all of those names kind of already combined together. What I could do is maybe rename this to so say as full name. And there we go. So now I've just extracted out the full names of a couple of my users along with their email addresses. And this along with a bunch of other different contexts could be useful to concatenate some of your column values together to get exactly the results that you're looking for. The next one up is substring index. That's number two. I got my number right this time. So for this function, what this allows you to do is get a substring based on what number occurrence you see of some particular character string within another string. So let's take another look at this users table. And what I'm going to do is say select the username as well as the email from user and then limit uh, five, let's say again. Okay, so here's a couple of users from the user table. What if I wanna do something like this? Let's say I have these emails and I have a bunch of them in this table. I wanna count how many people have an email that ends with a particular domain. So for example, maybe how many people do I have with at yahoo.com domains? What I could do is add to the selection here and say where the substring index of particularly the email. And then I'm going to say, look at the at symbol. And if I give it a minus one here, the negative number is specifying to start from the right side instead of starting from the left side of the string. And when you once you've seen one occurrence of the at, grab everything from the end of the string to that occurrence of at, which if it's a correctly formed email should be the domain. So if I try this instead, uh, let's see. Oh, I need to say, what is it going to be equal to if that's equal to yahoo.com, for example. Now what I'm getting is only my users with yahoo.com. So that's good. And then maybe I want to actually count these, right? So instead of just asking for the username and email, I'm just going to do a count of the email. And so this tells me I have 1,741 users with a Yahoo email address in this table. Another example with this substring index would be doing stuff with URLs. So I've got another table here, say show tables, 
And the table I wanna look at is shortened URL. So let's describe shortened URL. So this could be a table for representing, let's say at an app where you could shorten URLs, right? And so this table has an ID for each one, the short version of the URL and then the URL itself. So select the URL and the short URL from shortened URL. And what you can see here is we've got these longer URLs and then the shortened versions of these. So what if I wanted to, let's say, look at the URLs that I have in this table, but only see the, the, uh, the protocol and the domain and basically skip the path in this URL. For this, I could do something like the following. So select substring index, and then I wanna give it the URL. This time I want it to use the slash character as my delimiter. And assuming these are well formatted, we have two slashes for coming before the protocol and then there would be a slash after the top level domain. So what I would wanna do is look at everything before the third slash, and then I would say from the shortened URL table. And again, I'll limit five, and you can see here that I've grabbed a bunch of these domains where there's just the protocol and the domain without the rest of the path at the end. Okay, so the third function I'm gonna talk about is locate. This one's pretty cool. So what you can do is, let's say you have some bigger string and you wanna search for another string within that. So let's say I have the string planet scale and I have a sentence that I want to figure out where does planet scale exist in it. Well, I could call this function and it might tell me, hey, planet scale exists at say index 20 within that string. So why is this kind of information useful in MySQL? Well, let's look at yet another table. So show tables and then uh, the review table. So I'll select review ID and then I'm gonna go back here. So select review ID as well as I'm gonna do a substring of the text column. So this is like the text of a review for a product from one to 25 and then I'll say from review. So basically this is a table full of product reviews and what I might wanna do for a program that uses this is have a feature where a user can search for a particular keyword in review. So let's say I added to this where the text is like, and then for now I'll just put in some hard-coded value like a computer, but this could be something where the user could add a search term. So if you then wanna see, only reviews that contain that keyword. I'm gonna go up and change this substring here a little bit to be bigger. You get the reviews only that have that content in it. But then what if I wanted to add an additional sort to this? So maybe I wanna sort it by, I wanna show the reviews sooner that mention the keyword computer earlier in the query. That way, um, as the user's reading through these reviews, they can more quickly see where that search term is mentioned. So I could add that here where I say something like order by, and then I could say locate. And what I'm gonna do is within the text column, I'm gonna say locate the string and the string that they typed in is computer. So remember, this will give back the index that it occurs by. So if I say order by desk here, what this now does is you can see that it's showing um, actually, let's see. So it shows computer early here, computer early here, but it doesn't look like it's quite in the right order. So let's see, what do I need to change here? I think what I need to do is add order by, oh, I have these parameters wrong. So computer, the term to search for comes first. And then what comes next is the value that you want to search through. So I do this, but then I want to just change the ordering. So it's ascending. And there we go. So now you can see that the queries that contain or the reviews, the text reviews that have computer in them are basically ordered by how quickly that term is mentioned. So there's a bunch where computer is right at the beginning and then there's a bunch where computer is the second word. And if you went through this, you can see that computer slowly gets further and further into the review. So the fourth one, Fourth one is a little bit of a fun bonus one here, and this is the soundx function. What I wanna use for this one is the last table from this database. So if I select star from Word, what you'll actually see is it's an empty table right now. What I'm gonna do is paste in this command here to, oops, uh, 
there we go, to load data in from the local dictionary words file. So that user shared dict words file that has a bunch of words on my computer. If you're on a Unix computer, it's likely there. So I'm gonna run this and let's see, it loaded in a bunch of things. So now if I go back and do my select, there are presumably a bunch of words in this database. There we go. So what you can do with the soundx function, and we'll use it on some stuff in this table as a second, is something like this. So select soundx and first let me say latte. So I'm just gonna do a simple query here. And what it gives back is this strange string, L300. So what does that mean? Well, this is actually a string that essentially is a representation of what this string, latte, sounds like when spoken in English. And it uses this particular soundx algorithm. You can look more about that up on Wikipedia, but essentially it tries to translate into a string representation of here's how this sounds and output strings from the soundx function that are similar mean that the string sounds similar and ones that are very different means the string sounds different. So for example, if I change this just to the string late, this actually spits out the same sound X string indicating that these two words when spoken sound of course extremely similar. But if I do something slightly different like later, you can see it's a very similar string but not quite the same. But then if I do something really different, like for example, if I say chocolate in here, that's a very different string, starts with a different letter, right? C starts with a C and so on. So what I could do with this that is arguably useful uh, is something like the following. So maybe what I could do is try to find out of a dictionary or out of whatever data set of words you have, a bunch of words that all sound similar. So that soundx one where I asked for latte and it gave me L300, maybe what I could do is try to find all the strings in a database that have a similar sound or the same sound when spoken to that. So I could say, select everything from the word table where the soundx of the word is equal to that. And so what this is gonna give me is all of the strings that have a similar spoken sound, of course not identical, this isn't a perfect algorithm to that. And you can see there's a decent amount of strings that come out here. I could do a count of these just to see how many there are. Count and we can see that there's 126 strings, uh, strings with a very similar sound. So is this all that practically useful? Well, you could probably find some scenarios where it could be. So for example, maybe you're doing a speech to text application and you wanna give the user the ability to, after the conversion, make some corrections. So if they click on a word and say, I wanna correct this, because that didn't actually say latte, maybe they said late instead, you could use something like this to automatically pick recommendations for what the user might have said if there was a mistake with the speech to text. All right, that's it. Four functions that you can use to impress your friends at parties or up your MySQL game. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and subscribe to the channel or hit the like button and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for being here.